Here's a question for you. If you had your life to live over, at least that part of it you've lived, would you do the same as you've done, or would you live it differently? I don't mean the little things so much, but rather the big important things. It's a big question, and according to a survey, a third of the women would do differently if they could live their lives over again, and better than half the men would have chosen some other line to follow. At first glance, it appears that women are a lot smarter than men in making the major decisions that affect their lives, but that's not the whole story. Men have a much wider choice as to careers than women. You can say that women have exactly the same choice, but it doesn't work out that way. You don't find many women piloting commercial aircraft or ships at sea or playing center for the Chicago Bears or second base for the Yankees. Most women consider their careers to be marriage, children, and a home, and it's a big enough career for anyone. Psychologists point out, for instance, that great numbers of young people every year give up their dreams for particular careers because love comes along. Now, in a way, this seems to be a victory for the woman in that she has achieved the career of her choice, while her husband has had to give up his. But the facts seem to point out that it's a pyrrhic victory, and while the cost is deferred, it's nonetheless there and must one day be paid. Psychologists say that after the honeymoon's over and the young couple begin to stare life in the face, economics enters the picture. And this is one of the major reasons why more than half of the men surveyed indicated that they would have done differently if they could live their lives over again. They did not mean they would not have married their present wives necessarily, although I'm sure there were, were a sprinkling of these, but rather they would have waited until they got on course before they married. Most of them in a few years wish they'd stuck to their original career decisions. They see then, although it seems they can't at the time of their mistake, that they could have had the career of which they'd planned and dreamed and the woman to whom they married. They could have had both, but they foolishly gave up one in favor of the other. They quit too soon. Economy is the great modifier of romance, and the girl is very wise who tells her young man to finish his preparation for his career before they marry. If their love is real and strong, it can stand the test of time. Time will only deepen it. If it's not the real thing, waiting will expose its flaws to the benefit of both of them. She will have a much better life, a contented husband, a better place in the community, and very probably more money to spend if she'll concentrate less on victory and more on a peaceful alliance. Occasionally, this picture is reversed, and then the man should be content to wait. A man needs a career outside of his home as well as a wife and children. Young women should remember this and get their starry-eyed young man back on the right track. 